Well, I mean, I never have any idea where I personally am going. I just uh, go moment to moment and try to do the best I can. Um, I attempt to stay as removed as possible from the overall trend of where film scoring is going. Because if you start trying to follow that, then uh, I think you kind of lose yourself. I felt for the last decade, 10, 15 years, more and more of a sense of almost being a more corporate attitude towards film music than it was from the time where I was inspired from it. You know, the, what I would call the golden age of Hollywood film scoring would be the, oh, probably late 30s, early 40s through the 50s and into the 60s. I, I still think of that as the, uh, the golden period. Uh, all of my inspiration came from uh, in the time where I started in the middle 80s to today, uh, the trend has been against individualism and more towards finding a, a more homogenous sound. And, uh, and that's been the most difficult thing for me to try to uh, avoid or not fall into. But it's hard. It's a, it's a constant struggle in a period where filmmakers more and more, they put uh, what we call temp music into the score when they're editing and the directors and the studios will get attached to that. And then you have to come in and attempt to do something very different than what they've been hearing. And so every film is a, an artistic battle that way. Every director says, I, uh, I don't love the temp, I don't love the temp, I don't really care. But most actually do when it comes down to it. And so you can't, can't really talk about it too much. You just have to start playing people music and try to like slowly pull them into uh, this world that you're trying to create and hope that they can let go. Really the trick as a composer today is to play them uh, as many options as you can come up with. Uh, when I was working on Alice in Wonderland, I worked with Tim for weeks and weeks on thematic material and things that he was slowly kind of falling into. And then I came across a piece that I had no scene that I had it up against. I call it just Alice Wild. Wild meaning wild track. And um, so it was this idea, which using uh, the strings from my library, which is primarily Vienna uh, strings. And um, it was just a feel that we were liking, that Tim was liking, and I was like, ooh, let's, let's hear more of that. So I started doing variations. And slowly, it evolved to the, the main theme of the movie. But it's not the one I intended to be the main theme. When I'm working, I come up with an idea, and like in the case of this piece, I just had this rhythmic thing that I kept getting in my head, um, and it was something that kind of would stick with me, so I started developing it into uh, variations, and uh, at a certain point, I think I had uh, 12 or 13 variations, all based around this same uh, piece. with this choral. And so it just all started around uh, this a very simple rhythmic idea uh, and these three chords. And um, so I kind of uh, would do a demo. It would sound like this for Tim. Of course, I had no voices, so I'd use synthetic voices to, sing, to do the melody. Oh. 
And this is a really good example of how um, uh, one may lay out an entire design for a film and then the one thing catches hold, an idea, and then it starts to spread throughout and then slowly it takes over and becomes the center of the score. And uh, it's actually not uncommon for me that an idea I have somewhere into the process takes me a little bit by surprise and then ends up becoming uh, the basis for the score. With Tim, uh, in particular, that's true because he, he tends to allow that to happen. And so, of course, one can only do as much as a director allows them to. But um, you get a little bit of my process here of how these are all, you know, demos as I worked it up, as I did variations, as I played them for Tim, and as they finally became part of the score. Most of the strings get replaced by real strings just because I love, as we all do, the sound of real strings. Uh, there are certain things that will stay. Um, pizzicato, for example. If I have the whole orchestra, really, if I'm using all the strings well and there's a pizz part, I may very well just use uh, my sample pizzicato and not take anybody off of the arco because I just don't want to give, any, give up uh, any players. Um, and on occasion, uh, when something's driving really hard, um, I will bolster up the cello, uh, the celli or the basses with some low marcato uh, strings just to give it a little extra push because there, are, there is also a point where uh, certain types of pieces where I simply can't get enough. I could have like 50 celli out there really to get the sound I'm looking for and I don't obviously have, I might have eight, you know, I might have 12, um, but I certainly don't have what I'd like to have at that moment to say, oh, wouldn't it be great if I had 30 celli here? Well, too bad. <laughs> I don't. I have half that. So I'll use a little bit of help. Well, the non-orchestral parts I'm keeping all the time. Yeah. Uh, I do my own percussion, and uh, most of the synthesizers are percussion or uh, things of that sort. I lay down and stay forever in the score. It's the brass uh, strings and woodwinds that get replaced. I don't even use a lot of uh, orchestral percussion other than timpani and cymbals. Um, even in my biggest orchestras, I can usually get by with just three percussionists instead of six or seven uh, because I like laying down a lot of the percussion myself. In this day and age, the directors really do expect to hear, um, you know, uh, a fully rendered piece. And so, you know, we do put the time and, you know, when I'm being able to uh, use the synthesizers and the samples does allow me a great freedom to uh, try out ideas. And uh, so <clears throat> not only does it allow me to experiment with the composition, but a lot with the orchestration. and. Uh, so uh, it's great. I mean, I don't know what it would be like for me in the days before uh, samples and sounds. I, um, I, I'm sure I would be writing very differently because uh, through uh, this version may have 30 earlier versions leading to this. And every time I'm trying something, trying something, trying something, I, I hear how it sounds, I like it, I move on. So I, like a director, I also respond to what I hear. And what I hear then triggers, oh, let me try going in this direction or that direction. So it's kind of a almost improvisational process for me. The Vienna strings have been enormously helpful to me uh, in the composition and the orchestration and in achieving the final sound of the, the demos, which these demos are what a director signs off on to get the score done.